Hi, I'm Amy Romeo of the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. And in this video today, I'll be showing you how to turn these inexpensive faux leather jewelry boxes from Amazon into great personalized gifts using heat transfer vinyl. I've designed a few different monogram and initial designs for you so you can craft along with me. I'll show you in just a moment how to grab those free on my blog. And I'll also be showing you a really important tip to make sure when you're pressing that heat transfer vinyl that you don't damage the top of your faux leather. So let's go ahead, I'll show you how to grab those SVGs and then we'll get started. To get the SVG files for this project, visit amyromeo.com slash design211 and then enter your first name and your best email address here and click get the freebie. And then check your email and I'll have an email in your inbox for you where you'll download the SVG files. They'll be in a zipped folder and you'll need to unzip them before you can access them and upload them to Cricut Design Space. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to personalize these jewelry boxes with heat transfer vinyl. And I'll have links to all of these materials that I mentioned and as well as the jewelry boxes in the video description for you. I'll be using the Cricut Maker today, but you can use any of the current Cricut machines or really any machine that cuts heat transfer vinyl because that's an easy thing to do with any cutting machine. And then you'll want some heat transfer vinyl in the finish of your choice. I'm gonna use some of the Cricut brand foil iron-on because I like that metallic look, but you could use glitter heat transfer vinyl or even regular heat transfer vinyl. Now you could do this project with permanent vinyl, but the permanent vinyl is going to stand up a little bit from the surface. The heat transfer vinyls really blend into that faux leather surface. You can even see some of the texture coming through and it gives you a nice flat feel. So I would really recommend using heat transfer vinyl for this project, but you could use permanent if you wanted to. Now you will need a heat press of some kind, and I'm going to be using my Easy Press Mini. That's because it gives me a good amount of control, and I'm also able to very easily vary the pressure when pressing very small areas like this. If you use a large heat press, then you might end up pressing the edges accidentally, and that could either flatten out your edges of your faux leather or have them start to melt, and you don't want that. So something small like an Easy Press Mini or a regular Easy Press that you can control is gonna be your best friend doing a project like this. I'm gonna cut the heat transfer vinyl using my green standard grip mat, and then I also will need a weeding tool of some kind. I like a pin pen, but you can also use the Cricut weeding hook. You'll want some craft scissors, and then you will need a cover sheet of some kind. So this is a larger t-shirt size Teflon sheet that I've cut down to size. I use these when I'm making earrings and keychains. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. Then you'll want to have a measuring tape of some kind on hand in case you want to sort of gauge how large your design is gonna be on your box before you cut it. So I wanted to mention also, these jewelry boxes are all the same size. They're about four inches by four inches, but they do have different insides. So let me show you what I mean. So this one has the little zipper side and on the top here, it has the necklace hooks and a small pouch, and then the four sections and the ring section. This one on the inside is going to have a mirror on the top. So up here, you can see there's a mirror. The bottom is the same, but here's the little mirror and you just pull it down with a tab and then that reveals that little necklace hook and pouch section along with some little earring holes. So I'll link to both of these for you, but just make sure that you're purchasing the inside that you like before you buy your supplies for this project. So you can see these come in lots of different colors. There's white, there's black, there's navy, tons of colors. These make great gifts for bridesmaids, teenage girls, really anyone who is going to want a personalized jewelry box. So you've already downloaded the free SVGs from my blog, and the four that you're gonna have are, you're gonna have initials with sort of this uh, floral pattern around the outside. Then you'll also have a, another initial with sort of a little vine inside a hexagon shape. Then you'll have a script alphabet inside the scalloped circle. And then you have a monogram. So the monogram is going to come two ways, you have the three monogram letters and then you can choose either a solid border or a scalloped border. So let's go ahead and hop into Design Space. I'm gonna show you how to cut both of these out and I am gonna show you that tip when we're in Design Space on how you can make sure that you're not getting any press lines and your design presses perfectly on the top of your box every time. 
So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload, and then Upload Image, and you're going to browse to where the unzipped SVG files are for this project. So I gave you four different SVG files, the monogram one, and then the three different initials. So you're gonna have to unzip that download folder first, and then you'll have these four files. So let me first show you what you're gonna do if you use one of the initial files. I'll click on the leaf and I'll click open. And you'll see a preview of the entire alphabet of that little circle leaf design. Click on upload. And that will bring it here into your recent uploads row and then you'll click add to canvas. So here you see again the entire alphabet and what you're going to want to do is ungroup these letters first so that you can delete all of the letters that you aren't going to use and leave only the letter that you want. So you're, this is the ungroup here, right here on the layers panel. And what that does is it separates all of the shapes from being grouped together and now you can manipulate them individually. So you can either use your mouse and draw a box and touch the ones that you don't wanna use anymore or you can come over here in the layers panel, you can click on each one and you can just click that little delete icon and they will disappear. So after you've deleted all of the letters that you aren't going to use, take a look at the one letter that you are going to use. So I've sized these all appropriately for the top of these boxes and in my samples you can see what my design size looks on the top of these four by four jewelry boxes but you're welcome to adjust the size if you'd like to. So this one is going to be 2.1 inches wide and 2.4 inches tall. And because these boxes are four by four, I recommend staying at least a half an inch in on all sides. So if you do adjust this size, I don't recommend making it any larger than three inches, three inches tall or wide, because that'll give you that extra half inch all around. So to adjust the size, you can either drag the size arrow just like that, or you can adjust the size up here in the size box and type a new number. But that's all you need to do for this. The letter and the design are already grouped together. So you'll just click the make it button and you're cutting on the vinyl on a mat. So the first step when you're in your mat preview here is to mirror the mat. And that's because the heat transfer vinyl letter cuts in reverse. So it's very important if you want your letter to face right side up that you cut it face down and the way you do that is by mirroring. Now I also mentioned that there's an important step that you wanna take so that when you press your heat transfer vinyl onto your faux leather, you don't get any press lines or indentations in your faux leather. And this is where you're gonna take the step that you need to to avoid those press lines. And if you're not sure what I mean by press lines, I'll show you when we're actually pressing onto the faux leather boxes. But for now, what I need you to know is in this step, you're gonna to wanna to take your design here and not leave it in this top left corner. You're gonna to wanna drag it down so that it's in the center of the four inch grid here on your grid lines. So here's the bottom four and here's the top four. That's the size of our box. And you wanna drag your design so it's roughly in the center. And I'll explain why that's important in the next step. But for right now, just know that that's what you wanna do with this design or any of the designs that you download for these boxes. Just put it right there in the middle of the four by four. Okay, so we'll click continue. And then all you'll do here is choose your vinyl setting that corresponds with the vinyl that you're going to cut. So if you're using foil iron-on, choose that one. You can use vinyl or you can use glitter vinyl. It's totally up to you. But what I wanna do before we cut this is what I wanna show you how to use the monogram file because that one is more customizable and personalizable. It's gonna cut exactly the way this one will. So what I'm going to do is return to my home screen and create a design space and start this process over to show you how to use that monogram file. Then I'll show you how to press the monogram onto the faux leather box itself. So again, we're in a blank canvas and create a design space. And again, we'll click on upload, upload image, and you'll browse to where that monogrammed file is. Click on it to open it. And here you can see all of the letters plus the two circle borders I mentioned, a plain circle and a scallop. Click upload. Click on it to select it and then add it to your canvas. So again, we want to ungroup all of these shapes so that we can manipulate them separately, delete the ones we don't want and keep the ones that we do. 
So you may need to click the ungroup button a few times before these all really ungroup. So once you've done that, if you're able to click around and you're able to click on individual letters, then you're all set. So again, what we wanna do is keep only the letters that we want to cut. So I'm gonna do an A for the first initial. So I'm gonna keep that one. I'm gonna delete all of these. I'm gonna do a K for my middle initial. If you're not familiar with monograms, generally the first name goes here, the middle name goes on the right, and then the large center initial is your last name initial. So I'm gonna drag my little R there. And now I'm going to delete every other letter off of my canvas. So now I've deleted all of the other letters off of my canvas. I did not delete my two circle borders because I want to choose one of those and then delete the other. So I think I'm gonna use just the plain circle border. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that scallop, but you can use either of those borders with your monogram. It's totally up to you. Just gonna drag this a little closer now to my letters. The first thing I wanna do with my letters, I did sort of drag them into position, but what you want to do is really take your time. Make sure that you're getting them so they're spaced evenly from each other. And then you'll also want to select all three of them and then click on a line and you want to center them vertically. And that's gonna center them this way. When they're centered and you like how they look, they're evenly spaced you're going to want to attach them, okay? And once they're attached, that means that all three letters are gonna to move together. Just gonna drag your letters and put them inside of that border, whatever border you chose. Now select the border and the letters. Again, click on a line and you want to center horizontally and you want to center vertically. That's gonna put the monogram right inside that border. Once you've done that, with your circle and your letters still all selected, again, click Attach. Now your entire monogram can be moved around without disturbing any of your spacing. Okay, great. So once you have your monogram set, again, you'll repeat the same process. You'll click the Make It button. You're cutting on a mat. You wanna mirror your design. Again, you're gonna drag it so that it is in the center of the four by four grid line. Click continue, and then choose your corresponding material setting. I'm using foil iron-on with default pressure. Okay, great, so let's hop over to the Cricut. Let's get our monogram cut out, and I'll show you how to press these. So I have my green sticky Cricut mat ready to go. I already cut my heat transfer vinyl to a four by four size. Again, remember we're working with a four by four size on our mat and we have our design in the center. And when we go to press, you'll understand why this four by four size is important. But for now, cut your heat transfer vinyl to a four by four size and place it down on your sticky mat. And if your mat has lost some sticky like mine has, then just go ahead and put some blue painters tape down to sort of hold it in place. We already have that foil iron on setting ready to go. So we'll just load this into the machine and we'll make our cut. So my monogram has cut. I'm just going to unload the mat, remove my heat transfer vinyl. And then use my sharp weeding tool to weed away all the excess vinyl. While I'm doing that, I have my Easy Press Mini set to the low setting. If you're using a regular Easy Press like the 9x9, I would set it to about 265 degrees. So I've already weeded the inside and now I'm gonna weed the outside. And I wanted to mention, it's very important that you don't take your scissors and trim down this four by four shape as you're weeding. We want it to stay this four by four inch size. There we go. And now I'm gonna show you why the four by four size is important. I've cut another monogram and what I've done is I've trimmed it very close to the edge and if you put your design on your cutting mat, 
if you leave it in that top left corner without moving it into the center of the four by four square, this is how you would have to cut it out. It would be right up against the edge and you would cut it small like this. And let me show you what happens when you do that. When you have your little jewelry box and you wanna press on it, if you put this on top and then you press the clear transfer sheet that your heat transfer vinyl is stuck to, that clear transfer sheet is going to leave a press line in your box and you don't want that press line. It's not gonna be pretty and it's gonna change the texture of your jewelry box. So we have our monogram in the center of our four by four piece of heat transfer vinyl and we've left that nice clear border. So watch what happens when I put this on top to press. The edges of the clear transfer sheet are well off of the jewelry box on all sides. So when we apply heat, we're not gonna get any press lines on our box. Isn't that a great tip? Okay, great. So what I'm gonna do now is zip this up to keep it nice and sturdy. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna eyeball this and sort of center it on my box. You want it to be centered top and bottom. Make sure it's nice and vertical, nice and straight. And I think that looks pretty good. So now all we need to do is cover with our Teflon sheet or cover sheet. And then we're gonna press for about 10 seconds, again with the Easy Press Mini on low. I like to sort of move around the Easy Press Mini because we're not able to cover the entire design at once with the size of the Easy Press Mini. So I do just like to move it around. If you're using a regular Easy Press, you would just press it down. You don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to press on the edges of the boxes. After about 10 seconds of pressure all over, then we're just going to very slowly and carefully peel away that clear carrier sheet. Now if you start to peel and you see the vinyl lift at all, just very gently place this clear transfer sheet right back down and continue pressing. But that looks really good. And you can even see, as I mentioned earlier, the sort of texture of the faux leather starts to come through, which makes this look really high-end and custom. So I'm just gonna press one more time now that that thick, clear transfer sheet is out of the way. I'm just gonna cover, press one more time for maybe four to five seconds. This does two things. It makes sure that the vinyl is pressed on really well and it also gets it pressed even more into the texture of the top of the box. And I think that looks great. So here's another look at all of the different types of personalization and customization you can do on these boxes. Again, I have the initials for you and also the full monograms. I hope you enjoyed this project and you're going to make some of these personalized jewelry boxes yourself. Don't forget to grab those free SVGs I created for this project for you. Just head over to amyromeo.com slash design211 and I'll send them over to you via email. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.